So, do you want to do another predicate logic proof, Mark? Another one's always good. Okay. So, here we have three premises and a conclusion, and what do you want to do? Well, I see the existential HX here is the conclusion. You see it right there. I'd sure like to do a modus ponens on line three to get my conclusion. So you're thinking backwards from the conclusion, by the way. You're I thinking, I want to get this, I see it here, yeah. I want to unlock it from there. Yeah. That's thinking backwards from the conclusion. Look, yeah. we've worked forwards before, but maybe this will help a little. If I could do modus ponens on line three, I'd be done. So in order to do modus ponens, I need a GC. Uh -huh. I don't really see a GC around, but I do see a G up here. And now that I'm looking up here, I see it it's almost looks like a modus ponens. And if I could do a modus ponens, I might get a G, and yeah, I, I gotta, gotta sense where I wanna go. Uh -huh. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a UI on line one. This is saying for all things that exist, if it's F, then it's G. If it's true of everything, it'll be true of Charlene, or Charlie, uh -huh. a little C. So let's do a UI replacing these X's with C's. Okay, C's. and let me, w before we do this, let me just point out, students sometimes will do a modus ponens just off of this. Uh -huh. And uh, let's just make sure we understand you can't do that. That would be like doing a modus ponens. Yes, it that. would. Yes, it and would. For this, just like you wouldn't do modus ponens here, for the same reason you wouldn't want to do it here. This is kind of like that. That's a good analogy. Yeah. It's a very good analogy. Let's look at this for a minute, just off, off the side. Mark has written nice, better penmanship. He's written a tilde and then parenthesis F horseshoe G. Now he's got the F down here. It looks like modus ponens. You know, it looks like P, P horseshoe Q, bring down Q. The problem is that this P here, this P horseshoe Q isn't the whole line. It's, it's a negated P horseshoe Q that's the whole line. And so if we do modus ponens, the P horseshoe Q has the whole line of the proof. It can't be part of a bigger formula again to emphasize that. If you had that, you could do it. Yeah. But we don't but, have that. But since this is part of a bigger law, formula, we can't do modus ponens there. Mm -hmm. and, and Mark drew a beautiful analogy to this because just as um, this looks like modus ponens, but this isn't the whole line. And so it's part of a bigger formula, so we can't do modus ponens on it. Also, fx is not the same as fc. And this isn't matching that. So remember that when you do modus ponens, this p part has to exactly match the p part of the p horseshoe q, which in itself has to be a whole line of a proof. It can't be part of a bigger formula. So, okay, so we're just going to make sure that. So what do you want to do? So you you want to do ui on, on one. one. And notice that when I do UI, I could bring down, I could instantiate using any constant I wish, couldn't I? Yes. I could use A, B, D, G, R, N, M, but we're using C, and why do you want to use well, C? Well, I want to match it up, hook it up with these things. So if you I use C, I can do a modus ponens. Because you can do modus ponens and get this. Yeah. Okay, so F, C, horseshoe, G, C. Now notice when I do inst universal instantiation on line one, Notice that I strip away the quantifier, and then I bring it down, and the only change I make is I replace the variable with a constant of my choice. Remember, when you do universal instantiation, you can use any constant you wish to instantiate. There's no restrictions on which constant you use. We used C, could have used anything. So I bring this down, making only one change. I replaced X with C, okay? And now I'll go ahead and do the modus ponens I wanted to do. So okay. now he's allowed to do modus ponens off of two and four. Okay. Yeah, so let's look out. at that. So P horseshoe, P horseshoe Q, P, and he brings down Q. And that gives me my final modus ponens, which I thought of already. I knew I wanted to do a modus ponens on three. Now I can with three and six. Okay. And that gives me the conclusion, and I'll be done then. So. Uh, we have P, P horseshoe Q, and we brought down the Q, and Mark modus used ponens. modus ponens, lines? Three, five. Three and five. P, P horseshoe Q, bring down the Q, and since this matches, thank you. Since this matches that, the proof is complete and we've proven the argument valid.
Very good. Yeah, great. Thank you. Good luck proofing.